Live from Cambridge, Massachusetts, extracting the signal from the noise, it's The Cube, covering the MIT Chief Data Officer and Information Quality Symposium. Welcome back to MIT in Cambridge, Massachusetts, everybody. This is Dave Vellante with my co-host, Sam Kahane, and it's our pleasure to have Gopal Subramanian, who is the Senior Vice President of Fidelity. Welcome. Thanks Thank for coming you. on theCUBE. Thank you. So this is your first time at the MIT IQ. Funny name, MIT Information Quality Chief Data Officer Symposium. It's a mouthful. Uh, of course, a lot of guys from the Army and the Navy here, so they like mouthfuls. <laughs> <laughs> so what's your take on the event? You know, sort of what brought you here? So um, I work very closely with uh, Dr. Rapa. Um, who runs the uh, data science uh, practice in uh, North Carolina. He's he was, been on the he was, Cube, Yeah, yeah he, he was right. in MIT, he was in part of the Cube. So we work a lot with uh, his uh, office and we recently hired folks from uh, NC campus. So he invited me to, to join the panel today and I'm here. So, yeah, Michael, actually, he was one of the first to actually institute that sort of data science program and, and yeah. uh, they've done had great success with that. So talk about your role at Fidelity. So um, uh, I have two uh, roles I play at Fidelity. The, the primary role is I manage data for asset management. Uh, basically that supports all the asset classes, uh, be it fixed income, equity, high income, and so on. Um, and the second role I play is I actually chair the uh, technology advisory group for data where um, we try to bring data together as a single practice for Fidelity, even though we have each division have a data practice. Uh, we have built a community of practice, uh, so there are a lot of ideas that come out from uh, our engineering community across the board. How do you bubble that up uh, is something that we very closely work with our community. So, so there are two roles, one is on the asset management side and the other one is across Fidelity. Are you a de facto? Chief Data Officer? Or? We don't have a Chief Data Officer at Fidelity. Um, uh, maybe the role that I play uh, is one, but but uh, we don't have it. Uh, we have a Enterprise CIO, um, but we don't have a CDO. And you don't report to the CIO? Uh, no, I don't report to C the CIO. I'm part of the asset management still. I'm part, I report into a CTO of asset management. Um, the, the CTO, CTO of, as, of not asset the, management, the not the CIO. Yeah, 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 okay. But that's what I said, I have two roles. One is uh, reporting yeah. into CTO, uh, focus on asset management, but I do the second part, which is basically across Fidelity. I mean, we always have these discussions about organizations. It's, you know, it's, organizations are important, and, and you've certainly seen the CDO role emerge in, in certain industries, financial services being yep. one of them. Why, you know, Fidelity's a leader and an innovator, and a lot of people will follow, it's like the NFL, what's Fidelity doing? Well, I'll try to figure that out and do what they do, is uh, number one. Why no CDO, is it? See, I think the CDO, we, we, even in the conference today, we're talking about it, uh, for a CDO role to be successful, and if you look at it, there's only a handful of CDOs across, this, they mentioned like 300 CDOs or something. Yeah. The, the role has to be clear uh, for a CDO to be successful. Otherwise, you'll start that role in 18 months, you will fade away. So I think Fidel is taking a cautious look at this and, and see if it makes sense for us to actually create a CDO role. And if, if, if we create one, what does it mean to the organization and to the individual? So I think there's a lot goes beyond that before we actually create it, and we, we heard it multiple times today. Mm -hmm. So I think uh, even though we are ahead of technology, we, are, we, we, we do a lot of good stuff. We are very innovative in a lot of places. Uh, this is something that uh, it is going to take its course. Well, and Fidelity, from my understanding of the organization, is you got a lot of entrepreneurial spirit sure. in the di different divisions, and the heads of those divisions, you know, have a lot of energy and speed. And we, I could see it'd be very difficult for an organization like that that's going in so many different directions and so focused within their you know different areas to say, okay, now. Here's the data czar. Yeah. Make it all you know, work together. That you almost set up that person for failure. So we do have multiple data czars, if you will, right? Yeah. So like you said, each division we have right. uh, leads there who actually. The one good thing that we have done, uh, creating this data technology advisory group, which I chair, is actually bringing those czars together and 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 actually creating a practice that we can share from each other, if you notice, right? So this uh, uh, asset management might get a tool for a particular use cases that might be useful for another division 
which we were not talking so much. Now we are bringing all of those together and saying, okay, that's a use case. That applies to what we are trying to do. Let's learn from each other. So we are doing a lot of those, uh, not necessarily having one role from the organization perspective. Yeah, and that's a, you know, so you're sharing best practice. I mean, a lot of people can Framework, this best practices, all of those good and, stuff. And you know, sometimes the whole data thing is amorphous. It's hard to get your hands on. A lot of people in our audience, you can understand marketing, right? Marketing's easy. Marketing's hard, by the way, but understanding this example is easy. You got a marketing manager in the division. Yeah. The division head wants control of that marketing manager. Yeah. Of course, the corporate marketing wants the corporate messaging. They don't want to talk about your products. They want to, <laughs> and there's always that, that, that tension, so it sounds like you're taking a practical approach yep. and taking it slowly so you don't fail. That's, that's sensible. Um, now, I want to talk more about this technology advisory uh, group, group yeah. that you created. So, what was the catalyst for that? What was the time frame for creating that? So we started this, I, I want to say, uh, now it's 18 months. Um, our enterprise CIO started a, one of the big program called Compute Strategy, where we focus on infrastructure as a service, platform as a service, and data as a service. So we actually put a strategy together uh, for all those three different tiers, and I was leading the data as a service uh, piece of it. Um, that data as a service, that particular strategy, led into one of the recommendation is to actually create a data tag, um, because we, f we found that it's not like we do the strategy and we are done with it, we have to start m influencing our divisions to execute on the strategy, and the best way for, for you to do that is to actually bring, continue on the data as a service that council till the execution happens. So that's how it was created by our enterprise CIO, which I want to say about 18 months back. So. So essentially, this is you, you've, and again, I know a little bit about fidelity. So you're providing services throughout the organization and in infrastructure, platform, and data. Uh, interesting, you know, you think about the, the framework in the technology industry, it's typically infrastructure as a service, platform as a service, and software as a service. Yep. You've got sort of data as a service. Is it a high level transport layer or is it? So there is, there is also a software as a service. What we're trying to do with the data as a service, the, the, the philosophy behind data as a service is very simple. If you look at the foundation, you build the foundation, data, structures, underlying uh, model, uh, quality, everything is done, that's great. How can we be nimble? If you are not creating something data as a service, then each project might take six months, eight months, 10 months. How can we be more nimble to our business partners and at the underlying, uh, insulate your structures in such a way that you can actually provide the service on top of it. So how do you create that 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 layer is what we're talking about data as a service. And now you obviously have to work with platform as a service in some cases, you have to work with infrastructure. Tomorrow you go cloud, you have to work with infrastructure as a service. So it, it, these are interrelated in one sense, but the idea is how can we three groups work together, be more nimble to our business partners. That's, that's the overarching goal. Well, and of course, it, it's tracking what's happening in, in the industry, technology industry in general. Got, you know, <coughs> infrastructure is servers over here, storage over here, networks over here, software is in stovepipes. You know, the you know, platform as a service. It's sort of, I guess, it's SOA has sort of evolved into platform as, as a service, and and those stovepipes have proved, you know, they've sort of outlived their useful yeah. you know, life, I think, and so now you're starting to see these things come together, so it sounds like you're taking a holistic approach, obviously. Yeah. The, so that's a, that's a multi-year program that continues, but then the, the, the council or the, the tag was created out of it, and we continue to make sure that from the data perspective, we can provide those kind of service to our divisions. And then, of course, the whole Hadoop big data yep. theme has been somewhat of a catalyst as well. Um, how has that changed your business? Well, at least now, if you look at it, um, there are some questions that was difficult to answer in the past. Um, we have so much amount of data right now, be it structured, unstructured, whatnot. The goal for our organization is can you get those data so that some of the questions that has been uns unanswered in the past, can we answer those questions, right? So that's what we're trying to do. So we're trying to create a framework where, and we call this, we call uh, a piece of it as a discovery warehouse. So can we get the data in and, and put the data in a format that we can actually start exploring ASAP, so that there is, so now the business gets value immediately, and then once they they hit gold, uh, we convert that gold into our enterprise warehouse. So you actually move it to enterprise warehouse. You, now you you actually create uh, the data, the service there through your portfolio applications or whatnot. So we are trying to differentiate between uh, discovery warehouse and your enterprise warehouse, and the big data plays a huge role 
in the discovery warehouse piece of it. And and I'm not looking at specific technology. I'm not saying Hadoop, it could be Hadoop, it could be NoSQL, it could be Cassandra, it could be anything. But the point there is the whole big data ecosystem can provide a discovery warehouse where we can be more discovering stuff and then we enterprise it later. Yeah, I mean, independent of the technologies, there's some things that are pretty dramatically different. Yes. Um, shipping data, uh, or code to the data, as opposed to data to the That's code. Think doing things in a distributed manner. That's right. Uh, leveraging more sort of off the shelf, so-called commodity sure. components. Um, things that in the past you, you couldn't do, because yep. you didn't have tools to do that, they didn't work. You know, and so you'd go out and you'd buy a box. Yep. And, and, uh, and, the, and, the, and, and if you look at the technology, it's, it's, it's more scale out mm -hmm. rather than scale up, right? So with, with the technology that we have, we, you, you can add more processes and you can, you can scale out uh, linear. So my question related to that is in most organizations, I'm sure Fidelity Assembly, you've got your application portfolio, infrastructure supports that, and you've got business processes that tie into that application portfolio. And as the, as the technology infrastructure evolves and becomes more flexible, which is one of the goals, and, speed to market, time yeah. to value, all those things. Do the business processes you know, change? Or uh, in other words, if you're scaling out as you know, euphemistically, do your business processes scale out concomitant to that infrastructure? Uh, that's a good question and, and that's, uh, that they, we have to do that. Um, the, the thought process needs to change from the business perspective. There's a lot more automation right now that we can do. Um, so one of the things that, that we, are, we, are, we are doing that in asset management right now is as a part of the data modeling exercise from the technology perspective, be it conceptual, model, or logical to physical, we are doing the same thing on the business side as a business process model. We need to think about our business process model, how it has evolved and how it has changed. And we, that's a constant exercise that business needs to start working with the technology and vice versa. So how does that work? Does the, does the business process guru sort of inform and then the infrastructure and the software molds to that, or is it sort of the other way around? No, or? it's actually, it's a, yeah, there are, uh, I mean, we are very fortunate that, that our, some of our business partners are, are really technology savvy in some case. Yeah, yeah. So we have been very lucky that way, and, and, and the, the big thing about that is they also own some other stuff and, and say, hey, I know there's a gap here, let's, let's work together. So we have some leaders who actually step in and, and say, okay, I want to see this. So they push back on our CTO and others and say, let's work together, I want to create a business process. I know you have the other technique, but let's work on it. So I think we are lucky enough to, to have that kind of a partners who actually, uh, they embrace uh, technology, they know where the gaps are, and, and, they, and they push us. Well, it's true. Fidelity, in a lot of ways, is a big tech shop. I mean, your it products is. that you develop are their technology that enables yeah. all these products. And you we guys spend a lot of money on technology. Phenomenal job of that. So, well, sort of off topic of the data. So let's come back to the to the data a little bit. There's been a lot of discussion at this event around the sort of you know governance yep. as the sort of role. Um, and this to, to to us, and we've been talking about it with with Paul. And we've talked about the cube all, all week here, or last two days. This sort of balance between you know governance and compliance and all the edicts versus innovation. And I wonder if you could talk about that balance from a data perspective. So, so that's where I was I was alluding to some. If you look at it, the the whole discovery versus enterprise. So enterprise, you need to have governance. Um, when you're discovering some stuff, maybe you are a little bit loose on that particular piece of the governance because you're trying to find out what are the patterns I have and 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 how can this help in eventually with the business. But from the governance perspective, we actually, uh, the way in which we think through the governance is um, we define by subject areas. Um, for each subject area, we actually have three roles that we, what we actively uh, play. And one is basically a business owner, which is basically coming from the business, who basically defines the policies. Who should use, who should not use. There are certain feeds that we may get, only certain users can use it, so other, other divisions might not use it. What are the policies? So that's a big role that a business owner plays uh, for that particular subject area. When I say subject area, it could be holdings, assets, it could be portfolio reference, it could be security reference, it could be any one of mm -hmm. those. Then the second role is uh, business uh, steward. Business steward is basically saying, uh, if there's a quality problem, data quality problem, or an SLA problem, who should I work with technology to solve that particular problem? So there's somebody who works very closely from the from the business perspective, so that's a business steward. The third one is, is basically we call subject area owner, which is basically from the technology perspective. And uh, this person 
uh, is responsible to understand the data structure, who's using it, how they're using it, how much of reuse is happening. So, so these three folks come together uh, and, and help in terms of governing a particular subject area. So that has worked very well for us uh, in creating the structure. Business is part of this particular thing, which makes it easy for us. So that's a strategy that we have used. Um, and then wherever we think that we are innovating, uh, where we need to uh, to make sure that we are ahead of the curve on some that, that's where they do on the discovery warehouse piece of it. And once they figure out what how to enterprise it, then they go through this governance structure. So speaking of innovation, you know, Dave was mentioning before, you're kind of like the NFL, you know, always creating what's new. What's your next project? What's your next challenge? Well, uh, there's, there's, there's a lot. Uh, as I said, the compute strategy, we're using the compute strategy terminology uh, and the digital space into, into this infrastructure platform and the, and, and the data. Uh, a lot of innovation goes on in, in that space. Um, if, if you notice what we are trying to do from, from uh, I'll give you an example of what TAG does. Uh, for, I'm, I'm, I'm looking from the technology perspective. Um, we do what is called as an innovation trip. We look at startup companies. Uh, we have some problems that we have that we have to solve, and when we go to the startup companies, we try to match these problems to a technology solution. Um, the recently, I did one. Um, the, the tag, uh, the data tag, did one in uh, San Francisco. We looked at 18 startup companies in three days. And Where was this in, in, in San, San Francisco, Francisco in yeah. California? We uh, Palo Alto and, and San Francisco. Yep. We looked at 18 companies, and, and the goal was to see. Okay, we know that in the whole big data space, or uh, uh, there are some issues that that we have, and how do we how do we marry that with the proper technology? So we looked at it, and then and then we next step of that is basically come up with a pilot that that that's going to help that particular uh, solution. Now we are probably looking at two three years and say there are some companies which probably are doing some some work on artificial intelligence, and maybe we need to think about it right now so that three years and four years from now we can start leveraging this company. So there are a lot of pockets of this innovation that happens. We do innovation campaigns. We and then we we do a forty eight hour. Um, uh, what we call as uh, uh, as an innovation uh, st stuff, where the first 24 hours is basically defining the problem, the next 24 hours is basically solving that particular problem. So it it it, it's, it also helps in a kind of a motivation factor for for us. So there's a lot of pockets of innovation where people do to look forward in three to five years from the technology perspective, based on some business problems that the business are asking us, and then see if it marry if we marry that. Does that effort? Uh, so oftentimes, Fidelity will make investments. In There's a lot of investment that happens. So, so you inform that yes, process? Yes, yes. So when we go for the, these kind of trips, we can be informed saying that these are certain things that you might want to invest in, certain things that, that, that might be useful for what uh, what we are trying to do to solve the business, specific business problems too. So, so it's a combination. It's a value, not just an it's, IRR. It's a combination. Yeah. So that that's fascinating that you're going to San Francisco and you know, meeting with all these small startups to learn. Do you think other companies your size are doing that, or do you think that's? I'm sure they are doing in some kinds of uh, form, but but we are very active. Uh, my boss, who is the CTO, uh, uh, he does a lot of these innovation trips. Actually, not just in U.S. Uh, I mean, he the last time he was, in la I think last year he was in Europe, looking at some small companies and how they do data as a service. So uh, there's a lot of ideas that you can get out of these, and then in some cases we work with their products. So it's a combination. It's got to be really easy for you to get a meeting. <laughs> <laughs> Fidelity brand is extremely good. Yes. Well, what do you find? I mean, obviously Silicon Valley is a unique vortex of, of innovation, but you know, you're in Boston, um, New York seems to be bubbling New up. New York, yeah. And where, do, where do you see? And Washington, D.C. Washington, D.C. You know, overseas, I don't know if you, you guys spend any time in Israel, but you know, maybe it's more hardware oriented, but where are you, where, where else do you spend time? So, you, you got it. Uh, been to New York, San Francisco, the Bay Area a lot. Um, as I said, uh, uh, I didn't go, but, but some of uh, my colleagues went to Europe. Uh, they spent some time in Germany and, and other places. So they found some good companies out there. As I said, they were focusing on data as a service there. Uh, Washington DC has, has a lot of good companies uh, on the security side of it, uh, so if, if there is an interest on the, on that space, there's a lot of uh, because there's this government agency and others where security is a big piece of it. There's a lot of very innovative way that they, they look at security, and and that could be an area that that uh, if somebody's focusing on uh, a lot of small innovative companies coming out from that area. And we're we're in a small hub right here in Cambridge as well. There, there is, so we do a lot here too in Cambridge too. So yeah. What do you about data as a service? Uh, we talked earlier about how it's you know, we're talking internal service to Fidelity is. Is, does Fidelity 
sell data in any way, shape, or form? No, or at this point of time, uh, we don't uh, sell. It's more more our services rather than data. Uh, yeah. Do you think that's an opportunity for financial services companies in general, or is it just too funky and regulated? And I think it sensitive? is very regulated. There's very there's a lot of sensitivity of uh, inf information that we have. So it, it's. Uh, See, when we are trying to go into cloud, and, and that's a, uh, it is more uh, when rather than if, um, but we work very closely with our information security to make sure that whatever we are trying to do from the cloud perspective is acceptable, because there's a lot of, uh, see, the, the biggest thing is fidelity runs uh, on, a, on a trust, right? So people have trusted us, uh, the brand, and their money, so we have to be very, very cautious about it before we, we step in. We are very innovative from the technology perspective and all those things, but at the same time, we still, we have to face the customers and we have to be very clear about it. So it's, it's a balance that we have to strike. One of the, key, the keynote for the conference yesterday, Sandy uh, Pentland, talked about this enigma, yeah. uh, sort of a new framework, potential framework for internet security, yeah. uh, inspired by the Bitcoin blockchain. Bitcoin, yeah. And, and privacy too. And the general topic of, of security with all this cloud and mobile and big data and social media, is security a do-over for our industry? I think it is. It is. Um, we have a new uh, security officer, um, and uh, he comes with a different perspective. Um, like I said, uh, it is not if, uh, it is when, so he's looking at it in an open mind um, and, and trying to put all the right controls so we have a right boundary, so we don't cross the boundary, but at the same time we are secure. So there's, a, there's an active uh, conversation going on in, in, in our community to see what's the best way to, to move forward. But sometimes it, it might look like it's paranoid, but it's, uh, I think it is for the right reason, but we have to strike the balance. Well, there's a lot of innovation going it on, is. obviously. Right? It has to be, because the bad guys are really smart. And it is, it is. <laughs> and they're really so It's a matter of time. Yeah, so, um, interesting. So, just sort of closing thoughts on you know, this event, things you've heard, uh, takeaways. Well, this is my first time. I, I actually enjoyed it. Uh, the, the the speakers were great. Um, I get to meet some of them uh, out after the after the event. Uh, it's actually you can learn a lot from each other. The ideas have been great. Uh, last month I was uh, with my CIO in one of the CIO conference in uh, Newport. That I mean, you get to s when you go to these kind of conferences. There are certain things that you do and you actually learn from others there are different techniques of doing the certain thing. It is always useful, I really love it. And it's intimate here, you know? It's it not, is. We spend a lot of time in Las Vegas, and uh, <laughs> a lot of walking. <laughs> you know, Too so. much walking. <laughs> Go Paul, well thanks very much for coming. Thank you so here. much for having me. Insights. Thank really you. Appreciate Thank it. Really appreciate it, really a pleasure meeting you. Thanks, All right, man. keep right thanks. there everybody, Sam Kahane and I will be right back after this. This is SiliconANGLE's The Cube, we're live at MIT in Cambridge. We'll be right back. <laughs>